Welcome to Axiom Portal Software. This video is designed to give you an overview of the AX800 and 400 amplification and control solutions. I'm going to be going over the 800 and 400 amplifiers as well as the KPC, KPD, and mobile apps to control these amplifiers. We could talk about amplification. First thing is our AX800 uh, ADV amplifier has six amplified outputs at 50 watts per channel or 70 watts per channel at 4 ohms has two preamp outputs uh, for those additional outside zones or zone 2 has 11 source inputs first six inputs are analog and digital inputs 7 and 8 are digital coaxial or optical only it does have one media input in the front of the unit uh, done with a USB and two wave audio inputs. Has four composite video input and outputs. Has eight keypad outputs uh, capable of a Cat5. Uh, you can run a keypad up to 300 feet or 100 meters. This system is IR, RS-232 and Ethernet controlled. Each zone has its own 12 volt trigger. Uh, for triggering events or opening doors or anything that you would do with a relay. Uh, each zone will have its own trigger for that. 10 IR inputs. The first inputs are dedicated to the actual sources, first eight sources. With IR outputs 9 and 10 being some or any IR that's triggered throughout the system will blast from 9 and 10. Ethernet media playback, you can add NAS drives, computers, uh, things that are sitting on your network will be played back through the system. You have a front panel setup. On the front panel setup, you can uh, do various controls, control sources, and as well as a certain level of programming for your system. Systems expandable to 96 zones. You have control for extra vegetable drivers available for free. Has speaker output clipping, uh, compression, RS-232 echo, 600 millisecond delay. That's on each source in each zone. The AX400 is similar. Has four amplified outputs, six inputs, for analog and two digital 50 watts per channel at 8 ohms and 70 watts at 4 ohms the 800 and the 400 also comes with a uh, web interface uh, with this web interface you can just simply type in the IP address of the unit that's sitting on your network you can operate these systems with this web interface on any PC that's sitting on that same network that gives you maximum control of your system as far as selecting sources, uh, controlling sources, as well as some um, program features also available. Eight IR outputs on this unit. Of course, the first six being dedicated to the actual sources, with seven and eight being IR blasters. Four keypad outputs, IR, RS-232, and Ethernet controlled. Each zone has the same 12 volt trigger as the 800. 400s and 800s can be linked together. Uh, they are linked together either through the Ethernet or there is a RJ45 link patch cord that would jump from unit to unit. This is a typical way that you would connect two units together. Here we're using, in this example, two 800s, but 800s and 400s, once again, can be connected in the same manner. Here we're using the expansion loops, right here, RJ45 to RJ45. Right here, we're actually linking our analog sources right here into the bottom unit. But one thing you may notice, that this is a purely digital unit. In other words, any source that goes into the system analog is immediately converted to digital and it remains digital that's why here you notice we have analog going in but digital coming out 
if we're going to 96 zones, we're expanding with digital all the way through the system. So any analog source that goes into the system is converted to digital, and they'll output digital. The only exception to that rule would be here, and these are zones uh, 7 and 8 on this unit. Of course, they're just analog outputs to an amplifier for backyard speakers or multiple uh, areas where you're going to have multiple speakers. Okay, here's a typical connection. This shows the connectivity of one of the 800 units. Here we have the 800 unit. Here we're going to go ahead and add speakers. We're using our amplified outputs, our six amplified outputs here. To that, we're going to go ahead and add some analog sources. In this case, analog and one digital source as well because we're using the Apple TV. And as you can see, we have them plugged into our analog and our digital inputs there. To that, we're adding KPC and KPD keypads, one for each of the six zones. And here we're using our zones 7 and 8. And on zone 7 and 8, we see we're having a backyard there. You can see the rock speakers. We'll go ahead and we're adding uh, an analog output to a power amplifier to power that outside zone. And then we're using the, the next zone. Uh, these are zone 7 and 8. Then we're using zone 8 to power maybe a guest house or a room that has multiple pairs of speakers. As you can see, our system is pretty maxed out at this point. But with the AX800, one unique thing about it is you can still expand to it even after you're using up the actual formal zones. And I'll show you what I mean. To that, we're adding cameras to our system. And we're adding a monitor to monitor our cameras. These are all composite input. By the way, these cameras can be routed the same way the audio can be routed. They are part of the matrix system. These first four here would be first associated with the first four audio zones. Okay, to that we're adding a wireless router. And with that wireless router it gives us the ability to add wireless devices. Here we have, we're adding iPhones, we're adding a NAS drive to our system, we're adding an iPad, as well as an Android for control. Also, once the system is added to the network, it gives us the ability to use our web interface. Here we're typing in an IP address on any computer in the house, and this is showing up on our web interface. As you can see, that system is pretty taxed out at this point. But the beauty of an AX800, since it does not necessarily care where equipment is, we can still do that. Go ahead and add a theater. Uh, what we're using here, we're just simply using one of our IR outputs right here, going to an IR block, and we're controlling multiple devices here. We can also uh, control multiple devices over the network, as well as the RS-232, as well as uh, any IP or IR device. So in this case, we can add multiple theaters to our system and still not affect any of these zones. Reason being, the AX800 doesn't particularly care where equipment is in the system, all it cares about is the command that you're sending to a device. With that in mind, you have the ability to add multiple, multiple layers of equipment to the system without having to worry about that equipment being assigned to a particular zone. Let's talk about some of our interfaces. We have five ways to actually operate your system. We have the iOS and Android interfaces. We have KPC and KPD keypads, as well as you have the front panel on the AX800. The front panel is exclusive to the AX800 only. The AX400 will not have a front panel interface. And you have the web interface. The web interface can be accessed through the 800 or the 400 because it's basically sitting on your network. Any computer that's in your house will have the ability as well as any mobile device will have the ability to actually pull up this web interface. Okay, let's talk about the front panel touchscreen. This is once again on the AX800 only. When you pull it up, this is what you would see. It gives you the opportunity to affect sources, uh, select zones. You can actually select volume and mute. Uh, also has a more button on here. Once you select that more button, 
you push it one time, it's just going to give you the rest of the sources. Remember, we have uh, up to 11 sources on here, including the media tab. If you push that more button, we'll give you more sources. If you hold that button in for one second, what it will give you is even more functionality to your system. It gives you the ability to EQ your system, uh, set levels, set zones, delays. also have a system button. On the system button, it gives you even more ways to actually operate and manipulate your system other settings once you hit the system button let's just set time and date time and date being important on the system because you have the ability to schedule things okay you can also link zones together uh, create party mode create different zone areas uh, you can link zones one three five and seven together or any combination of zones up to 96 zones can be linked together can also create groups with that. You can also EQ your system. You can control trouble and base uh, for your system. And this is for each source in each zone, by the way. Also, you can set up your network information, uh, network being important on here, because you want to want to communicate with the Internet and for time. Uh, and, of course, anything that you have sitting on your network as your mobile devices, uh, as well as your web interface. And all of this can be accessed from your front panel. This is the web interface. Once you go ahead and you type in an IP address, this appears. This will happen on any computer that's in your network as well as any mobile device. Just so simply type in the IP address of the device and it gives you this web interface. And from there you can control. Uh, you can select zones, you can actually select the sources as well. You can also add custom buttons to your web interface as well. That's all done through the Axiom Portal software. There's also a media tab. On the media tab here, remember we talked about uh, network connections. From here, you can access the front USB that's on your AX800, as well as any NAS drives, computers, or any storage devices that you have sitting on your network, they can easily be accessed and they will automatically show up right here on the web interface. Of course, this is all done through the Axiom Portal software. Okay, we have iOS and Android uh, scalable layouts. And remember, this system can be totally controlled by your Android, by your Apple device. Uh, by any tablet um, and these are totally customizable um, some of these are made as templates for instance these are three templates that we have made for you already you can simply drag these into your project and drag code to them and they simply will work the important thing to remember about the interfaces that they are, are customized you can build any interface to look any way you want you can add any button that you want you can add pictures you can add any logos that you would want and they can all be turned into buttons they can all carry macros they can all do multiple tasks um, the sky's the limit as far as uh, programming on the interfaces once again this is all done through the Axiom uh, design portal software that software is definitely available to you and I will tell you how to get there our KPC and our KPD keypads. First we're going to go over our KPC. KPC has a 2.8 LCD touch panel. It's powered by 12 volt or it's powered by a PoE switch, power over Ethernet. In other words, it does not necessarily have to be plugged into the back of the 800 or 400 amplifier. It can simply be plugged into a network connection anywhere you have in the house. As long as you have power over Ethernet, you can either have a PoE injector or a PoE switch to power this keypad. It is a network device when used with an R4 or R1. R4 or R1 will be discussed in later videos. It has a three-state animation button. In other words, if I push this button right here, CD button, I can make it change colors to let me know that that button is actually selected. When I put the volume up and down, uh, it actually changed colors to actually represent and get feedback from the amplifier to confirm that the volume is going up and down. Um, buttons can have multiple uses as well. If I push a button, I can have it turn on a source. If I hold a button in, I can have it turn on a source and dim the lights or any other uh, macro that I 
choose to slide or drag into that program button area. Each keypad is IR learning. I can learn IR commands to this keypad or I can learn it straight to the software through the keypad. Customizable layouts. I can make these keypads look any way I want. Ethernet connection, once again with an R4 or RD. R4-1 and R4-D are actually pieces that add automation to your system. They will be discussed in a later video. This is the resolution of your keypad. Multiple zone control. In other words, I can control all zones with one keypad or as many keypads as I want to add my system or as many zones. I could control them all with one keypad or I can control them with multiple keypads. The KPD keypad, some differences between this and the KPC keypad is the KPD has hard buttons. It has a power button, has a volume up, a volume down, a mute button, has a select button, a source up, source down, and an OK or confirmation button. Once again, this keypad is also totally customizable. I can make the colors look any way I want. I can put uh, pictures on the background. Uh, once again, sky's the limit on how I want this screen to look. Difference is, hard buttons actually do all of the switching and changing on here, as opposed to the KPC, which is a total touchscreen. 1.5 color LCD screen on here. IR, same IR learning capability. I can learn to the keypad, or I can learn to the software through the keypad. has two RJ45 connections for daisy chaining wire. In other words, I can connect uh, keypad here, connect another one in the back of here to go to a second or third keypad. Um, that way you don't have to home run all of the wires for the keypad. You can run one to one keypad and go to the living room, dining room, kitchen by daisy chaining them. You simply tell which keypad it is within the Axiom portal software. Wiring up to 300 feet over Cat5e and that's the same for the KPC and KPD keypads. This keypad is powered by 12 volts from the amplifier or by a 12 volt transformer. Um, it is suggested uh, that you do plug this keypad directly into the back of the amplifier and try not to uh, use a 12 volt source because you would have to kind of break out your Cat5 to do so. So it's suggested that this, amp that this keypad be plugged directly into the back of a 400, 800, R1, or R4D. Pre-program active source naming, meaning that you can name these sources within the amplifier itself and they automatically populate your keypad for you. Has the same selective active feedback. In other words, if I push the CD button, I can have it change to that color there. When I push the volume up and down, I can actually get feedback from the amplifier to see it go up and down. Same has the same multiple uh, control. One keypad can control all 96 zones or any combination. Here's a typical uh, setup uh, using the KPC and KPD. Um, in this configuration, uh, we're using all of our IR outputs to our sources there. Uh, we have a uh, Cat5 going to a wireless router where we're talking to an iPad or iPhone or Android device or a tablet. We also have two KPC or KPD keypad connected in this configuration as well. This is where you would get uh, your software. Software for this system is absolutely free. You can go to the Play Store, to the Apple Store to get your mobile device software. Uh, you can go to Axiom .co.nz for downloads. You can also go to currentaudio.com and look under multi-room. You can also find the Axiom software there.